Welcome to the Advanced Lightroom webinar. And it's funny because we call these webinars, and I think for some people it means different things. And it's really a one hour workshop. This is really what it is. And we do usually have a special to thank those who come during the live event. And I will share that at the end. Uh, for those who missed it, I will share that at the end. But we want to do these so that you can learn to use your Lightroom more, to enjoy it, to not be frustrated, and just equip you to use this amazing program that you have for either a hobby, your family, or a business. So during our one hour tonight, we're going to talk about using the library filters. Okay, we're going to talk about metadata very quickly, not too much about metadata, a lot about filters, a little bit about metadata, shortcuts that can save you time when editing, taking photos from uh, Lightroom to Photoshop and or PSE and back to Lightroom again, and then some ex uh, more advanced exporting than we were able to get into in the past two webinars. A lot of this is really building. Um, I kind of previewed some stuff or talked a little bit about it in the beginners in Lightroom, uh, beginners and intermediate. I couldn't really get down further with it, you know, dig deeper. So here's our time to be able to dig deeper with some of these uh, concepts. Okay, so the first thing we're going to talk about is the library filters. And I, I want to take just a second to say, if you're very confused about the catalog and collections and folders, I am not going to be delving into that tonight. Um, I, I'm assuming that the majority already have that conquered, those concepts, they really understand them. If you're confused, don't worry. Um, the beginner and the intermediate, I talk about those. So go back and watch the beginner Lightroom video webinar and the intermediate. Okay, so we're in our library. and if you have not been using collections, you need to start because it's fantastic, of course, to be able to really organize your photos uh, within Lightroom to edit a small portion, to just organize them so you can find them. You also need to be doing keywords, and we're not going to get into keywords tonight, but you need to be doing keywords. It just needs to happen, okay? So let's say that you have you know, done a good job with your collections, or you've done good with your keywords, but you're still you're trying to find pictures that aren't necessarily in any one collection or you know aren't you don't can't remember if they uh, would pertain to a particular uh, keyword so let's say I want to find all the pictures taken with a wide angle lens okay so I'm gonna go into my catalog here first oops let's come up here I'm gonna do all photographs now please know that that this is just my very, I call it my quick. It's my catalog, my quick catalog. The catalog I have that's much bigger is on an external hard drive I have picked up and I can show that later. But um, what I'm gonna do is, is just, and most of these photos that you're looking at as you see me scroll through are not mine. These are um, from Brook Lug Photography or Piece of Lisa Photography um, because they are, allow Laura to use some of their images for preset samples or webinar examples. So thank y'all anyway for those ladies for doing that. Okay, so let's say I want to find pictures in my little small catalog of 733. My PC has like 20,000 in the catalog and my, my the Lightroom catalog has like 7,000 I think, 5,000, something like that. Anyway, so let's say I want to find wide angle. Well, I didn't have a keyword for wide angle and I didn't have a collection for wide angle I mean that would be kind of silly because in one shoot I might use you know take two pictures with a wide angle and then the rest of the time use a telephoto so who knows but we can use filters to find that and the filters are up here okay so we can filter by text so like a keyword we also filter by an attribute which we'll talk about in a minute or we can filter by metadata so when you click the metadata, now, if you're taking notes, you might want to write this. You're only going to see these filters when you're in the grid view. We're not going to see them when we're in the loop view, okay? See, it goes away when we're in the loop view. You need to be in the grid view, and you know you're in the grid view when you see this little lines down here, or that's how you get to it, or you can hit G on your keyboard, and I know that's more, you know, those advanced users, please don't fuss at me. 
for showing some beginner stuff, but I just want to do that real quick. All right. So right now we have some develop presets, camera, lens, file type. Well, lens is what I want right away. So I'm going to show first how we can find that. So 24 millimeter um, f2.8, that's the lens I want to look, look for. So now once I click on it through my whole, once I'm on the whole catalog, it's going to show me all the pictures taken with the 24 millimeter or whatever you, the widest angle you have. The widest angle you have might be 35. Or if you have a kit lens, like this looks like a kit lens right here, that was taken, but I don't know that it was a wide angle right there. So what we can also do is do focal length. Well, I was at 35 with this one, okay? So let's do the 24, and I'm happy with that. That's what I wanted to look at. So these are all of the pictures taken with my 24 millimeter, so a wide angle. I was able to sort down through all these different pictures and find just the pictures taken with my wide angle. Or I might say, I want to take, um, I want to find all of them shot with my 70 to 200. But I want them all, I want to see the ones that are at 200 millimeter. There we go. So these are the pictures in my catalog taken with my 70 to 200 at the, the longest focal length possible, the 200. All right. Now, if I, um, you know, want it by camera, we can do that. Let's say you don't see lens here. Maybe you have your Lightroom open and you're saying, okay, woman, I don't see lens here. How do I get lens there? Well, see when I hover over it and we get these two little arrows? If we click right here, um, let's just do something like label there. So that's how you change to set the filter to something different. So I don't want label. I want the lens. And for develop preset, I don't want that. Let's say I want um, file type, okay? So here I've got the choices of digital negative, JPEG, PSDs, PNGs, RAW, TIFF, video. <clears throat> so we can sort down. So that's fantastic, right? And it's fun. You can find that needle in the haystack. We can sort by the camera. So I can do by, by the D700. Um, by the 51.4. So there we've got that. Now, what if you want to use a filter all the time and you hate having to go through and sort, 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 sort to find what you want? Well, this is where you can create your custom filter. So I can say, okay, I just want all of the JPEGs with all cameras, all lenses, all focal lengths. So I just, I want by JPEG. I don't want to narrow it down anymore. I want just JPEGs. Or I might say, I just want um, digital negatives. So I just want the ones that have been converted to a DNG. Now I can come up to custom filter right up here, go down here and do save current settings as a new preset. And I can do DNG files. So if I later am um, wanting to sort things out, I can come down here to filter and say, okay, I want the JPEG files. And it goes straight to the JPEGs. I can say, nope, I want um, those that are five stars. Oh, now comes all the ones that are five stars that I have given a five star rating to. I can say, all right, no, really, I want all of the Tamron 70 to 200 shots. Well, there it filters it down. So you can create those custom filters and down here in the bottom, you can, here I have one for flash fired. So I went through, I made a bunch of examples for y'all and some I really use a lot. So I really use um, all those that are flagged. Um, I like to turn the filters off quickly. If I, uh, Rejected because I like to, that's how I go through and will quickly reject um, and get and call my images. So I will go through and let's see. Um, I'm not gonna do that right now. 
I've done that. I think I've done that before. Anyway, if I have time later, I'll show that. So I can go through and look and see none, none match. Usually if I have done this, then I re, then I delete them and I get rid of them. Let's see through, let's say, so I might reject a few. I'm just hitting X on my keyboard very, very quickly. Hitting X, okay? So now we can, I can turn it, go to that filter and do rejected. So now it's showing me all the ones that are rejected. I'm going to highlight them all, Command A. Actually, I want, I'm going to uh, pick this one. There we go. So highlight them all and then I'm going to hit delete because I want to get rid of them. Delete from desk, they're gone. All right. So <clears throat> that is the filters. And just have a good time and think about how you use Lightroom. What are some things that you do constantly? So what I was showing you there very, very quickly is when I import pictures, I will go through and flag the ones I want to keep and reject the ones I don't want. So how I reject very quickly is with the X on my keyboard, X. So I'm going to go through and do that right now. So just so you can see, and I can do it in the grid or the loop view. So I can say, oh, okay, and I don't want this one, X. And I have auto advance turned on, right? And if you don't know what auto advance is, go up to photo and click on auto advance. What that means, as soon as you have rated it or flagged it, it's going to advance you to the next one. And it's just going to push you through. So I might say, no, I don't want that one either. Yes, I want that one. Uh, yes, I want that one. Oh, I've got some multiple copies. So no, 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 no. Um, I might say, mm, yes, no, no. So just go through there and I hit X and P, X and P, and I have the auto advance just quickly go through. Now what I can do is go and choose the rejected. And we can see these are all the ones that I have rejected. If you want to change a reject to a selected one, then just hit P on your keyboard. P is for pick, and it will then do that. So the rest of these, I'm going to go ahead and delete. Now, remove the virtual copy. Yes. Oops, I want all of them. Sorry. Select all. Delete. And I'm just going to remove them from my Lightroom. That's all I'm going to do is remove from my Lightroom. What's the difference between remove from Lightroom and delete? Delete deletes off your hard drive. So it's gone forever. Poof. And remove from Lightroom just removes it from your catalog, but the, um, the real images are still on your hard drive. Now, this virtual copies, it just removed the virtual copies because virtual copies are virtual. They're not real until you export. Okay. So let me just do filters off. So I turn my filters off and I have all my pictures back. Okay. <clears throat> Something I want to show you really quickly, just a few things, because I know I have some intermediate users in here kind of growing to advanced users, and I'll make sure you're making the most of your library. Hopefully you know that you can make your thumbnails bigger or smaller with this little slider right down here in the bottom right hand. Um, of this middle section, you can make your thumbnails bigger. If you're like, gosh, my thumbnails are so small, they're hard to see, you can make them bigger. You can add a rating. You can sort by the added order, capture time, edit time. So you can sort within this, um, so if it's a collection or, I've, you know, I've got my whole catalog there that I've selected. But then you can sort what you're seeing, okay? Does that make sense? So you can sort how you want to view those. And up here, or down here, I'm sorry, in the very bottom left corner, right above your film strip, this is the film strip, see we have one and two. What the second one is, is we, we get another, it's almost like a picture-in-picture -picture type thing. And what's nice about that is that as we move, you can change, I'm sorry, you can actually change what you want that to be, right? So you can, oops, sorry. You can change how you want to view these. All right. Let me get back to one. And so if we want to compare, 
we can select another one but you can choose how you're going to be viewing things so as you see one over here you can have this second view secondary display right here and then you can change you can zoom um, change the order of it so just play around with that and uh, see how you can fit it into your Lightroom workflow. But I know a lot of people don't even know it exists out there. I don't use it that often, but I just want to make you aware of it. All right. The other thing I wanted to show you, and I showed before, was this spray can. So if you want to quickly add some keywords to some images that you weren't able to do before, you can do that. So you click the spray can, and now we can, I'll just do LR Advanced, something like that. Now, once it's in there, so I had it hit Enter, it's, it's programmed. Now I can just spray it on what I want it to, to be. All right. And keep scrolling down and say, okay, I want it on this one and this one and this one. And it's going to apply the keyword wherever you choose to spray it. That's the spray can. And to dismiss it, just come back over here and click. And you're good to go right there. Okay, metadata. <clears throat> Up here, down here at the very bottom is your metadata. And you can create presets. It's, it's so interesting because everybody thinks of presets in terms of editing. But you can have filter presets for the library module. You can have importing presets, metadata presets, um, exporting presets, of course the brush presets, the develop presets. So there's lots of different uh, presets that you can make. And all those are, are just recording of settings. So we have our metadata and I can change, oops, not that, my preset. So I have AP 2014. I'm just going to click on it. Now we can choose to apply it. I'm just going to cancel. Let's say I need to get on one of my own. These are not my pictures right here. Okay. So the preset I want to apply is AP 2014 to that picture. And we can see that it's giving me the file name, file path, spine, the dimensions, when it was originally taken, all this stuff. It gives me the EXIF data, meaning the exposure, the focal length, the um, ISO 